the it's important to have that balance of not like just completely tearing yourself down because that's not going to get you anywhere but be, being able to take the time and having like the humility to look back at it and be like look these are the areas that i can improve on i need to learn how to do this better for the next time yeah i think that's something that happens with us as artists like maybe you did that piece and in that part you weren't too happy with it mm -hmm. but the client's ecstatic and yeah it's a piece that he got from you right right but you're bashing yourself and i think because you're comparing yourself to how other artists are going to mm -hmm. view that piece right you know? and sometimes i think we have to remember that it's it's about the client at still yeah, that's know? the most important did they part. like it at the end of the day and you know you're going to improve on that next piece when you do try it again mm -hmm. you know so <laughs>Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the IQ Project. I'm right here with my co-host Ricky Tat. Yo. And my other co-host Romeo Shades. What's up? And you guys already know I'm Josh. Um, today we got a special guest. We got Elijah. Do you go by Elijah or do you go by something else? I go by Elijah. Yeah. Elijah? Okay, dope. So he works at Vatican, right? Yeah, at Vatican Studios. Vatican Studios. And you've been tattooing for how long? So I've been tattooing for about roughly uh, two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. nice, newbie in the house. Yeah. Two, two newbies. Years. You want to get us a little information about yourself? Yeah. So um, I apprenticed under my pops, uh, Alexi Vaz today. Um, I started my apprenticeship pretty much like right after high school. Um, apprenticed for about three years. Started tattooing towards like the end of my third year. And then I've been now at the shop at Vatican Studios for close to a year now, um, full time. Nice. Um, How was that? How was that apprenticeship journey? It was. It was a. It was. It was a good journey. Um, really, just having like not only my pops, who's was such an amazing mentor and able to teach me so much, but everyone at the shop um, would always let me pick their brains and was always pushing me and trying to help me learn and grow. Um, made for a great experience. Mm -hmm. Um, having my father as my uh, mentor was definitely uh, a bit of a learning curve in the beginning to try to, you know, making sure to separate that boundary between like, you know, home life and family, but in between like the mentorship as well. No. Um, you know, you in the beginning slip up and get, you know, reamed appropriately by your mentor or lectured. And then 30 minutes later, you're on lunch. And you're like, oh, so how's your week? Was your weekend? And you're like, hmm. <laughs> 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 like you forgot I, to take out like, the trash. Yeah. By the way, how's the line work right there? <laughs> well, let's give a little background. Like I know your dad has is an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. Um he's if you guys probably seen him on Instagram, he's he's the one that does a lot of owls, right? Yeah. And he freehands owls, he draws them on and he tattoos them. So that's a really great person to mentor under. I mean, and especially being at the shop you're at, yeah. uh Vatican Studio is probably one of the best shops in Southern California, uh, with a lot of amazing artists. So, man, yeah, you really got a different experience it's, for apprenticeship. It's been, it's been a blessing yeah. to apprentice and learn there under everyone. And everyone has such different things that they can teach, too. Um, just having that overall experience of, like, watching the way everyone works with their clients. And um, just everyone tries to really, we really at Vatican try to cater to our clients and make them feel, like, welcomed and and uh, oh, give them a more experience. Because sometimes getting, you know, tattoos and all can be intimidating or, and it can be a lot to go into. Um, so trying to like make that experience more personal and a safer environment with and just doing beautiful work that makes our clients happy is super important. And so like having that kind of experience versus like a lot of people start off with places that are just more like in and out, get it done. It's just work. It's just a, you know, a canvas versus um, really approaching something like a project. Or yeah, something. It's something as a project yeah. and you're you're doing something, you're doing a, this this piece of art for a person that's going to be on their body for the rest of their life like going the distance to really make sure that like they're happy with it and that it is going to, you know, tie in whatever meaning they want it to hold and and connect on a deeper level. Um you know. yeah. So being that you're at Vatican which is like one of those premier shops, you know, um obviously uh, we look up to that oh. shop as far as like they feel they, you know, have a legacy in the, mm -hmm. in the industry. Does Franco like have meetings with you guys and talk specifically like, hey, the customer experience, you know, we need to like be on it. Or is this something that you guys just kind of in you just know just by, you know, just seeing other artists, they're working in Franco. Or? I think it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's kind of like everyone in the at our shop has already been tattooing for over a decade, if not two. So that I kind of everyone who comes there is on like the same like mindset of wanting to like have that personable deeper experience with their clients and and kind of creating that environment 
Um, and I think it's definitely something that was it's uh, maybe talked about like as like we're bringing someone new into the shop and that that's what, like what we're looking okay. for and like make sure that they like are kind of bringing that same kind of energy. And then once um, they're a part of Vatican, it's definitely something that's expected. Um, Mm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I actually like that. Like we talk a lot about that customer service, like treat yeah. your clients right. Yeah. Um, and I like how that is changing in the industry itself mm -hmm. because everywhere you go now, like people are nicer. Like we were yeah. talking about it earlier. Yeah. Like you said, you've been around the tattoo industry since you're little, right? So yeah. You, you seen both sides. I grew up in it. Yeah. Yeah. So you seen back then when it wasn't as nice. Mm -hmm. Like people would hate on each other. Yeah. You know? it is. So what do you see the difference? Like, I guess my question is like, how do you see it changing right now? Like, I think the biggest change that I've seen within like the last decade is really that, that push and switch towards, um, treating it as, uh, really in, treating it and seeing it as an art form, uh, mm -hmm. like all the other fine arts, um, between that and then like the push for the way that like as tattoo artists we treat our clients in general and the way we see them and approach them mm -hmm. i think those have been like the two biggest things um sorry no, it's, like, <laughs> <you good? laughs> hey, it's, your first, it's your first podcast he's, uh, yeah. he's all like that hey. send the invoice out <laughs> <laughs> oh, no but that um that did make me like think of something. Do you guys have meetings? Because we just had a meeting and like I never went into a shop or knew that shops had meetings, you know, yeah. like and it's like, yo, you thought they were just at, at jobs or what? I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. so do you guys have meetings and stuff. Um, like, We haven't. Uh, we've definitely had meetings before. We haven't had one since I've been uh, tattooing there full time now. Um, but in the past, I know that there's been like meetings and things oh, like okay. that. Yeah. It's cool. hard. It's hard to keep it consistent, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, we see each other, each other every day. So. Right. The, the 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 information gets passed on through hey this happened you know let's yeah. do this and then we pass it around but yeah. um i think i think we should have them more often because it, it keeps everybody in the loop yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody likes that gets yeah. on the same page but it's hard i could imagine like yeah, franco's I, busy he's just like I don't he's, have time right now yeah and then everyone kind of runs on like their own schedule there and so it's it's uh having everyone in at once so i kind of want to go back a little bit more yeah. into like so what was your apprenticeship like in the beginning? So in the beginning, um, it was really, it was a lot of uh, shadowing over him. So I'd obviously come in the morning, set up and make sure the room's dialed clean. Everything's perfect into the tea before the clients come in. Um, and then a large majority in the beginning, I would spend like three or four hours. He'd have me shadowing over him as close as possible, just trying to learn and constantly asking questions. Like if I wasn't like on top of asking questions, he's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, this is your time to learn and absorb. Like you should be af asking me a question every moment you have. Like, um, and then from that slowly as I trend, like started to get more hours under my belt, we started to slowly implement having time on fake skin and things like that. Um, probably one of my favorite lessons that we had that really taught me a lot is he'd, um, he'd have me glove up and he'd have me come stretch for him while he was working. So I could kind of learn, um, depth and what that felt like as he'd work. So he'd pick a spot, have me anchor my hand in and stretch for him. Mm -hmm. And then he would work and we'd go back and forth and we'd do like an hour or two of like me coming in and stretching for him. Wait, what? Um, so you'd stretch the, yeah. So I'd, I'd get my gloves on and then he'd pick a spot. And then have me put my hand there and stretch for him uh -huh. until he wanted me to move. And he'd have me hold my hand there until he told me I could lift off. And then he'd pick my next the next spot and I'd stretch for him. Um, what mm -hmm. was the logic behind that? The logic there was that um, I would be able to learn and feel like what the vibration feels like when you're hitting the appropriate depth. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah. as like helpful as fake skin was... It doesn't always teach you what that right depth feels like yeah. and what that yeah. vibration is that you're looking for, that kind of feedback. Because between not only what we see with our eyes, what we feel and the sound that right. we hear from the vibration, like you really need all three to make sure you're constantly at the appropriate depth. Bro, I remember that being like one of the things I was like, how, like, how, what kind of sorcery is this? How yeah. do you guys know <laughs> how deep to go? You know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's cool. That. Mm -hmm. That was a little. Was it nerve wracking? Like you, like didn't you get tired? Like um, it was like, 
it was a little nerve wracking in the beginning, but he just kind of made it where he was like, look, you're going to put your hand here and your stretch here. And until I say move, you do don't move. Dude, yeah, that would have been nerve wracking. Because, <laughs> because he's I'm like, like, he's like move him. You know, to make sure like I don't like accidentally zap or touch your hand, you know, like I'm going to have a, you anchor in a spot and you're going to stay there yeah. until I tell you to lift off. And then we oh, just kind of like created like a system and repetition. Meg, I, got for a new, it. I got a new test for you. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch here. I'm yeah. like, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. then my, what do I do with my other yeah. hand? <laughs> No, you get that four cool. point stretch. I've never yeah, had that. That's actually that's pretty dope. Yeah. It, was, it was it was nice, and then I I got to like he got to like actually like show me hands on like how to stretch and what it feels like in different like your you know your three point stretch or whatever you know your palm in and spread with your fingers and yeah yeah so it's that's crazy because you said like yeah right uh, fake skin doesn't give you that depth mm -mm. but fake skin does allow you to maneuver the machine around right right so. Do you feel like that helped a lot? Because you said you did a lot of hours on fake skin. Yeah, fake skin really helped me a lot in the sense that once I started to make that transition um, towards actually working on people and on skin, I didn't have to learn both the machine and skin at the same time because that's mm -hmm. a lot. I feel like the most difficult thing about approaching and learning to tattoo is there's so many variabilities and so many different things you're trying to learn all at the same time. Yeah. So even if you can tack off a few of those already under your belt before you're onto people, just reducing the amount of things that you're trying to learn all at once, it made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, because I had already like gotten a like, consistent flow for my hand movements and strokes and things like that. So it was really just about learning, you know, make sure I'm going the right depth, proper saturation, my gradients are smooth. And then also, um, it was actually interesting making that jump from working on like a flat surface to like Around the surface. curves yeah. uh, on people and then having to make sure that you're consistently changing your angle along with the surface of their skin yeah. too on certain areas. Um, well, what, far, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I have so many questions, bro. I was like, what? Okay. Going into tattooing, did you know what style you wanted to do? Or was it more like, damn, my dad's doing this, so I kind of want to do this as well? So I have a couple ideas for like what I'd like to do in the future, but really I'm just like excited to kind of explore a broad spectrum of styles. In the beginning, they're really, uh, well, throughout the entirety of my apprenticeship, it was him passing on his skill sets and what he knew. And then from there, I'll be able to grow and, and find what I like over time. Dope. Um, so now like everything that I've been doing in my forte is black and gray realism. Um, but, uh, I would love to eventually learn color, especially, I think color is probably my biggest, like draw. And like the reason why that's like been like something I've always wanted to do is when I was growing up, my pops was actually known for being a full-time color artist. Mm -hmm. Um, all he did was color and he'd just do these gorgeous like color sleeves and back pieces um with and uh but now everyone knows him for doing black and gray and they don't even yeah. know that he was ever like the majority of color artists but like for me like seeing the color work he did was like one of my biggest inspirations and so i've always been drawn to color but then by the time my apprenticeship it's all black and gray and i was like man <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it's easier to learn one medium first and then jump into exactly one. instead of trying to learn multiple at a yeah. time yeah and then black and gray is also i feel like a really good starting point for anybody as far as like learning like how much saturation and how much like uh the damage the skin can take before it's too much and things like that yeah. you get to see a lot more to the skin with black and gray so i think um starting off by learning black and gray is kind of a natural place to start as well nice that's cool it, it even works like in art right like in order to understand color you need to understand tones tones yeah. yeah that's cool yeah that's why i tell you a lot of times one hack that i learned was just if you're working with color um take a picture of it and desaturate it and mm -hmm. that'll show you your tones you know and sometimes that shows you if, if it looks where it needs the the higher contrast yeah you know because a lot of times we're looking at something in color but it, you don't understand why it just doesn't pop yeah because maybe that red needs to be like a darker red mm -hmm. separate so no that's cool man what was your first tattoo you did first tattoo i did was a um i did a skull with roses was that the one you posted up? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So that that lake. That was your up. first tattoo. On yeah, skin? on skin. But the first session was only the gray lining. I'm gonna um, put it up here, Carlos. I'm gonna take a note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The first session was only gray lining. Um, we just map like getting the stencil on and mapping everything out, and it was it was amazing because I was able to have not only my pops, but I had Franco over my shoulder as well, and they're both just helping and nitpicking and kind of coaching me through the whole experience the and whole you're time you're sweating <laughs> like, I, was, I was like it was crazy because i wasn't even like 
it wasn't so much that I was sweating, but in the very, very beginning, I would just like freeze like deer in headlights. I was just like, I couldn't move. They're like, come on, like you got to like uh-huh. loosen up a little bit. But I just would like sit there and be like, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> like, just couldn't yeah. go. Um, but after my first couple sessions, one, right? yeah. yeah. So was your experience. It was the same way. Well, you guys were both right there, and all I was doing is packing in black, and I was yeah. there for like nine hours, bro, just packing in black. Yeah. But yeah, they were coming in and out and help. But yeah, it was scary. Which for one was sure. it? Which one was it? Um, Diego's Diego? goat. Oh, yeah, that's right. the goat. Yeah, all black, bro. Yeah. Like now, I could knock it out in like two hours, maybe. Right, you know? so it's all black. Oh. Yeah, it's cool, man. Did you uh did you draw beforehand? Like before being born? Yeah. Born so I I I grew up like basically always carrying like a pencil and paper everywhere I went. You couldn't catch me without it. Um, it was just, I was always inspired and in wanting to become an artist growing up in a household filled with my dad's paintings and such, um, mm-hmm. cause he had been drawing and painting since ever since he was young. And so I always had a house filled with art, always drawn to it and always wanting it and always asking him to teach me. Um, so it's, it's, so when was like the time, right? So obviously you're growing up, you could have started when you were 15, you know, things like that. So yeah, when did he was like, all right, bro, come on. So actually, I don't remember the story so well because I was so young, but the way my pops always tells it. So we were coming home after a long day one time on our way to our, back to our apartment. And uh, as we're walking up the steps, I was probably only about like five years old. And I just look up at, up at him and I'm like, it's like, why haven't you taught me yet? I was like, what's going on? <laughs> He's like, you want to learn? And I was like, yeah, why haven't you started to teach me yet? That's like, fine, why? Bro. Like, almost like, why are you slacking on it? Like, yeah. <laughs> I need to learn. And at the same time, I was like, yeah, I want to get a tattoo of like a dragon and a knight across my chest. Like I was like, <laughs> I was like ready to get fully suited up. Just dive in right away. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. So you told you it was like till you're 18? Yeah. So t- till I'm 18 would be like the apprenticeship. But he was uh, always giving me lessons and teaching me art basically ever since then. He's been my mentor since I could walk, basically. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I think his apprenticeship probably didn't start in three years. It started when you when when had that conversation, five, yeah. bro. Yeah. It really yeah. was longer than that because that's how I feel my daughter is. Yeah, my daughter absolutely. Is here and, and I feel like her apprenticeship kind of officially, not officially started, but, it, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's already, here and there. It's the other day started. it was funny. Uh, she was going to tattoo fake skin, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, can I use those towels that we have in the back? And so Megan does the, the towels for the, yeah. the artist. And I said, no. You make your own towels. Apprentices, apprentices make their own towels. And she's like, what? So I gave her a little, you know, <laughs> little yeah, yeah. like taste of how it is. Yeah. You know? So I'm just hearing your conversation, how you started. And yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm doing, I'm doing good. You're going to have a <laughs> yeah. stretch for you now? Huh? You're going to have a stretch for you for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's sick. <clears throat> so like, what would you, the, Obviously, you had an apprenticeship. You said it was three years because the guys here, or I don't know who told me, Meg, I think, told me that you uh, you did it for three years. I was, mm-hmm. And they were kind of like, whoa, because her apprenticeship was for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's a two-year apprenticeship, but mm-hmm. in, if she does good, she does everything, after one year, she can start yeah. on, on people, right? Yeah. But through there, she's still going to be over, have oversight with us. But um, <clears throat> do you feel like your dad was a little... Like, you think he was overly hard on you because you're his son? Or do you feel like I he think was there fair? Is, I think fair, but I think he definitely had, like, higher expectations and wanted to push me as hard as he possibly could um, being his son and, like, already having, like, the lifetime of um, him, like, being my teacher and my mentor and always giving me critiques. Like, we were already, like, kind of had that relationship of uh, that kind of mentor and apprentice. So um definitely by the time i got out of high school and was ready to start full-time he was ready to push me and expect like the most out of me because you know he no one i always like say it when people ask if i get nervous about taking on new things new pieces like no one knows my you know limits and capabilities better than him so whenever i have something that's new or daunting to me i I always go to him i'll ask him for whatever tips and the second he goes like i know you can do this make sure you you know you watch out for these things and whatever list it is i'm like all right i got it Mm -hmm. you know um it's so always a great teacher. Did he meant? Did he apprentice others while while you were, I, I guess, going to that that uh, studio? Mm-hmm. No, I think from what he told me, I think you were his only apprentice, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's nothing to compare to as far as like, okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. That's um, crazy, man. I mean, did you? I know every apprentice that goes through like their um, breaking point that they call it, right? Yeah. So how many did you go through? 
Oh man, it's because uh, <laughs> three years, you know. It was, uh, and honestly, it there was times where it was really tough, especially during COVID, um, because there was just like, you know, the shop and everything was shut down. I had moved away up to Northern California to live with my mom and stepdad and siblings, um, but then we were still trying to find a way to like work together and keep my apprenticeship going, so I didn't lose any momentum. So I was doing. For three months, I was doing eight hours of drawing a day, and I would send him my progress every two hours, and I was doing that five days a week um, during uh, like the start of COVID, and then I eventually came back down, mm -hmm. um, and everything was just pencil and graphite drawings, and then um, my reference would just be my phone and just draw from eye, uh, recreate the images, and then every night after I'd finish my whatever progress I got done, we'd go through and have a critique, and he'd give me the things that I needed to work on and fine tune and things like that. And then um, it which ended up being a really great experience for training my eye. So like when I had like the first ever moments when I'm tattooing and I'd have like a part of the stencil start to wipe away or no. fade and can't see as clearly, I had those times like came back to help me because I had already had like trained my eye to be able to like replicate and create something from an image without having the stencil there. Yeah. Um, so it definitely came in clutch a whole whole lot of times. And that's one thing we we tell the apprentice like too, like you have to learn how to draw freehand in case that happens. Because yeah. until it happens, you don't realize how important it is. <laughs> the first time you start to, yeah. you go for that first wipe and yeah. the stencil just like halfway comes yeah. off and you're just like, you start to sweat a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I, I need a bathroom break. You're, like, oh, <laughs> you're in the bathroom like, fuck, what, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> that actually just recently happened to me too uh to that chess piece remember oh, for um, walking? For, yeah oh, okay. dude i was doing uh the chess piece i was doing a poseidon mm -hmm. and he was nervous and he was sweating so as soon as i just wiped it off a little bit half of the stencil just came out Damn. so i'm there like fuck i can't re it because i already got a good portion of mm -hmm. it and i was like well let's let's see what happens i just kept going like with the machine and it came out pretty good from there. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of like being confident plays in plays a role into that when some, something it like does. that happens. You're just like, fuck it, basically. Fuck yeah. it. I mean, you, yeah, you can't break under that because yeah, no. what do you do? You have to complete it. You just grab a marker and go at it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Piece it, together. it always trips me out when I see online like videos of people doing like uh, he, these huge full color sleeves, and the stencil just doesn't come off. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, like yeah. where's that magic at? Because they're like they're wiping away with you know soap and water or whatever, doing full color. Like color can be a mess, and skin. it's just I think it's that perfect skin where it doesn't come off, and it just doesn't come off. And I'm like, what? How do you do that? Because I like, feel like I get like one wipe and it like drops by like half. And I'm like, yeah, I've had some where I'm trying to take a picture and I, and I still can't take yeah. off the stencil. Yeah. So I'm right there like trying to wipe it off. <laughs> it's always those. Yeah. And never when I'm actually like uh, in, like in the skin working when it like, yeah. stays. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I think one one good thing I learned from that is just try to wipe it with alcohol as much as you can before you actually start tattooing or oh, putting sure. the stencil on. Before you put the stencil on, okay, really cleaning it with alcohol yeah. first, yeah, or even an ointment, putting ointment on it, where or the green glide, wherever green glide you're using, mm -hmm. if you put some of that on it, that helps too sometimes. No, but I mean to like, so it doesn't come off while you're tattooing. Oh, so it doesn't. Okay, yeah, never mind. I thought you meant to try to take it off. No, no. Oh. To take it off, I use the the actual stencil stuff on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and too. I wrap it on. Yeah. So I'll put it on there. I'll wrap it with plastic, and I'll just have them kind of rub it gently. Okay, and it comes off. That's good because I, I remember that because I've had times where like there's still like a little bit of blue like afterwards uh -huh. and I want to like go take photos but there's like still like a little bit of like stencil marks and I'm like yeah <sighs> trying to get it off but I also don't want to like sit there and rub their fresh tattoo with alcohol this either. Guy doesn't care. This will like, <laughs> put alcohol. Yeah, in and start I mean I'll, 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 oh, oh. this guy <laughs> on the on the tattoo that when you're trying part? to get rid of the stencil. Yeah, and like oh, so like, what I do is like yeah I'll rub it with alcohol I'll fucking. I'll I'll put bactine on there. I'll let it sit for about ten minutes, ah, mm. and then let it numb up. And then after I do that, then I'll grab like a rag with alcohol and I'll wipe it down to take off all the excess ink, uh -huh. or else they can't take that ink off for like a week. Right. The seminar artists. Oh, okay. Um, they don't let you guys just go and peek. I I haven't take I haven't taken the time to go take no. take a look and peek. No, I need you get, to. You don't get the benefits of like being able to get a free seminar from them. 
Mm, I imagine if I wanted to like come in and peek and learn, um, I, I could, but during my apprenticeship, it was like my posse grinding. pretty much mm. just on like, me that I was like there with him by his side. And then now I'm just like, well, since COVID, the um, amount of seminars and such has slowed down. Slowed down. But we're, we're bringing them back. Right, that'll um, be cool. So it's, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's when I started following you. It was, um, I think a little bit after COVID, mm -hmm. when you were doing a lot of fake skins. Yeah. Uh, I was, that's, that's when I really picked up on the fake skins. Um, well, yeah, actually, I didn't start the fake skins until after COVID. How many oh. fake skins do you think you did? I did probably take. about 10, but I was doing front and back on them. And oh, front then, and back. And then before I did my first one, I had like a handful that were only lines, circles, triangles, and okay. calligraphying yeah. and things like that. And then he'd have me take the circles and triangles and create a gradient from one side to the next. Yeah. So I had a handful of those. They're big too. Yeah. I had yeah. like I had like some big open ones that he was having me do all those lines and circles. Fake sense? Yeah. Oh. Do you have pictures of them? Like they're very I have detailed. no photos no? of those. Oh, no. Man. Well oh, oh of the uh the, the fake skins with like my pieces and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah I do. Um I just don't have any photos of like the the really old ones yeah, with the, uh, the lines and like such. his and well the ones you did were like uh, those were really intricate too yeah uh. um they're fun and it was it was also a good experience to learn um how to like compose pieces and such like at the same time mm -hmm. yeah you got you have dope composition on those on, on your work now and mm -hmm. on the face skins that i saw yeah the one yeah. that stood out to me only because like i liked the show was uh the mandalorian yeah, yeah, that one was honestly one of the funnest to do, especially with like the the stars in the background and like all the rocks up front, oh, yeah. um, creating those little textures. How many hours would that would that take you? It probably took me eighty or a hundred. Mm, yeah. it's, it's a lot slower on because as I was going into before about how he'd have me stretch for him so I could like have the right depth, he'd have he'd have me do that, and then he'd also come over and show me the proper depth for skin on fake skin. Mm -hmm. That way. I had something to like aim towards that way the I was practicing proper death in, instead of going like a lot deeper to get the tones to come out. And when you do that, fake skin takes a lot longer. Like yeah. instead of like one or two passes to get in a tone real quick, it takes like four or five, six passes and you're like sitting there trying to like um, fade in whatever tones you're trying to get. Um, so it definitely. He never had you do the old school way where you're like getting a grapefruit. And <laughs> no, no, never did that one. Uh -uh. Um, but it'd be fun to go back on those. I've done, I've tattooed like like plastic, like cups and light, big lighters and stuff like that. Uh -huh. and that's been pretty fun um, to try out. Uh, definitely had a couple of my needles like bend and break when I'm like yeah. first getting onto the plastic and not realizing like how really soft you got to be. Yeah. But mm, I never did that one. So as a as a coming up artist and you're like fresh, mm -hmm. what frustrations do you find that you have? Mm. Honestly, the biggest frustration is probably just uh, I just want to be booked so bad. Just like, <laughs> I see everyone tattooing every single day, yeah. and I'm like, I just want a new client with a large custom piece, like letting me like compose something interesting and that's fun every day. Like I just want to be tattooing every single day. Like I just want to go, go, go. I think that's been like the biggest thing because our shops. I've technically our shops first full time apprentice sort of mm. um so like with like yeah so our first shops tattoo apprentice who's never had like any experience in the industry before we've had people come in that were just like starting off like self-taught and then wanted to come in and learn and apprentice more as well mm -hmm. um but our first the vatican's first apprentice from scratch um has been myself and so it's been definitely a learning curve on how to get clientele in since Everyone that's coming to Vatican's already had their own clientele and booking and already been working for almost nearly a decade prior to coming to the shop. Mm -hmm. um, so having to learn to like hustle that social media game and like sh get myself out there yeah. um, has been the main focus because we don't really get like walk-ins and things like that. Um, uh, you're the new generation too. Like yeah. back then when they started, most artists, they were known by like magazines and all that. Mm -hmm. Now you have the tools to use social media. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how fast you will get booked, you know? Yeah. Because I know you're pretty good on social media, too, so. <laughs> just getting it back on Yeah, there. just getting it back on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, How's it like work? I know you mentioned, uh, we are talking about if you've seen some artists there, and you mentioned Trotion. Mm -hmm. That guy just, again, just won in this convention. Yeah. For a big back piece, right? Big he does back that three-round liner work. Yeah, uh, um, Trotion and... Um, 
Alex, Alex Alex Sorso did that Sorso. piece to get that piece together. How's it like working with that cat? It, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, he's uh, he does amazing work, and it's always nice to like um, to get his input on things as well too. And it feels it feels good too to have like an artist like that like come by and be like, oh, like it looks good, it looks smooth. And like when you see someone like with as consistent and smooth as work as he does, like to get a compliment, his, yeah, is is, yeah. is a is a is a trip. Um, mm. uh, but uh. It's cool because we have we have Trocian, we have Alex, we have Max now. Um, we've got a handful of artists from Russia now at our shop that are all Russia? super t- super Dude, talented. And they got the patience to do that three round liner mm-hmm. stuff. Not. Yeah, that is a slow. Are you? Do you like that three round liner work? Mm, well, I love the work, but as far as doing it, I don't. <laughs> I, li- I like my mags. You like, mags, I like my uh, mags and my bigger nah, needles and stuff nah, like that. Because I was passing by the convention, I was seeing how when they were working on a back piece, yeah. and I just see uh, Trojan just be like dot 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 on some areas. I was like, man, that patience to do that. The he was basically <laughs> just dotting it. Instead yeah, of he was just machine. dotting some areas. I was just like, he. I mean, obviously, he would like drag the needle as mm-hmm. well, but on some areas, he'll just dot dot. Yeah. That patience is. Yeah, I tried one right after the convention. I tried to do a St. Jude, um, all three round liner because mm-hmm. I was like impressed. Yeah, and I I only worked four hours on it that day, but I didn't get much done. You know, mm-hmm. and I was like, shit, respect. Yeah, I did a whole back piece in three days, a whole like, back piece like fuck, that. You know, it's and then that black lot. part of the woman, mm-hmm. that saturated part. Yeah, um, Carlos will put it up right here as well, so we can talk about it. Yeah, um, was that all three round? You know, I'm not sure. It I'm not sure if it's mag. It, it might have been. I'm not entirely sure because I think right. the that part was uh, Alex did that part. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if he does only three round or not. I haven't gotten the opportunity to watch oh. him too often. Um, it's amazing though. Still, the I composition think, I think made yeah, it the composition know. and just like the, the consistency a, behind. It was a perfect levels of black in there too. Yeah. You know, and skin. Um, but mm-hmm. I think I've seen Trojan only talks about how he only uses three round liners. Yeah, I don't think he uses mags. No. So it might have been Alex that does that part. I think the one that impressed me the most, uh, I mean, he's done, he's a, he's an amazing artist, but he did one with, the composition was with the LA skyline mm-hmm. and he yeah. did the negative LA logo on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty impressed with that. I one. saw that piece. That was probably one of my favorite pieces that I've right? seen him do just, as well. It's it clean looks and so it just nice. composed compose real well. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty dope as well. Yeah. Seeing so many artists, like, because you work in the Vatican, mm-hmm. do you ever feel like you get inspired by different styles so you want to try different styles or do you just stick to what i definitely want to like be able to try as many styles as i can over time and just really get to explore um what what i'm going to end up being drawn to Mm -hmm. so it's definitely inspiring to see all these different artists come through with different approaches and um different like that's probably my favorite part is seeing different people's approaches and the way that they they view tattooing as far as like how they compose and how they their their eye sees everything um kind of getting that behind the scene like um approach is always mm-hmm. such a it's so much fun to see that it's so, so interesting is that one of the hard things to do like while you're there because you're surrounded by these amazing artists right yeah um is it hard to like stick to like oh, i just want to do how i do it and just grab like little tricks mm-hmm. from them or do you try to impersonate like their style that's what i was getting at <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. i try to i try to create my own like uh flow and like way and formula for composing um, but I definitely am always like picking their brains whenever I see something, um, that I haven't seen before, whether it's like the approach or technique or like, um, the actual technical application and different things like that, or like what needles and things like that they're using. Mm-hmm. Um, try to get those, those little tidbits, those little gold nuggets of information and knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I know starting your apprenticeship, right? You started tattooing. Um, What's one, because we all got it with that one day where we're just like fucking stressed out of, over a piece. Do you remember when you first hit that wall? Because mm. I know we, we got a lot of uh, people that want to start tattooing that listen to this podcast. Yeah. And they think it's a breeze once you start, right? And you don't realize to when you start, yeah. you have so many roadblocks you have to go through mentally and physically really do. to get where you want to be at. Yeah, I had um, one of my earlier pieces... Um, I had some really hard challenges on it just because it was, uh, a, there's a handful of like, uh, 
effects and textures that I had to create for the piece that I hadn't done prior on uh, fake skin. And so I was trying to like learn ways to like create that. Um, and I was just hitting some walls because I couldn't quite get it right. Like I was trying to get like more of like a misty, almost like foggy effect, but it's mm. coming out looking almost a little more like clouding and things like that mm. and certain textures and creating senses of depth mm. in the piece. And I just, I just couldn't quite get it like the way it needed to be. Um, and that, that was probably, especially in the beginning, the hardest day I had as far as like the actual like piece at hand and making sure it came out the way I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. Those kind um, of things make your day just like shit, huh? Like afterwards, you're just like, it's yeah. stressful. Um, <laughs> it's you get, that's, that's the type of day you need a beer after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to sit down. <laughs> well, I mean, to the common eye, you know, people or people that are watching, they they'll look at it and be like, "Damn, that was dope." Yeah. yeah. But us as artists, we're just like, "Yeah, nah, man." Yeah. That's when you see way. like your own work and like nitpick and see the mm-hmm. things that you're trying to go for and where you wanted it to be, mm-hmm. um, definitely you end up a. Uh, into picking at yourself which is important you know it's it's having that balance between not like completely it's important to have that balance of not like just completely tearing yourself down because that's not going to get you anywhere but be, being able to take the time and having like the humility to look back at it and be like look these are the areas that i can improve on i need to learn how to do this better for the next time yeah i, I think that um i think that's something that happens with us as artists like um, maybe you did that piece and and that part you weren't too happy with it, mm-hmm. but the client's ecstatic and yeah. it's a piece that he got from you, right? right? But you're bashing yourself. And I think because you're comparing yourself to how other artists are going to mm-hmm. view that piece. Right. You know? And sometimes I think we have to remember that it's it's about the client. At still, yeah, that's know? the most important. Did they part. like it at the end of the day? And you know you're going to improve on that next piece when you do try it again. Mm-hmm. You know, so. And in a way, I feel like that would be a little bit more like – worse for you because you're surrounded by all these amazing artists yeah. you know so now you're trying to compare it to their work you know right. and i think that's the hardest thing too that's trying to not compare your work to other people that have been doing it for 20 yeah. years i try not to like compare too hard i mean for the most part i think um as far as like the mentality and how i approach and look at it um having always kind of grown up with having mentor that was as talented as he has and always being surrounded by those artists it just kind of always has been something that lights a fire under me like every time I see their work I'm like Mm -hmm. this is where I need to be going like this is the direction I need to be headed at and so um, not only the tips and advice and all the knowledge that everyone's so ready to instill in uh, in me and to give to me um, also having like that target of where I want to be Mm-hmm. has helped a lot as far as like my growth like seeing the type of the level of work and precision and cleanliness and composition whatever it is um being able to see where i need to be it helps to have a target on like where you're headed okay oh, yeah. so you say you you work five days a week right mm-hmm. um and you're not booked every day. So what do you do on your off days like so are my, you drawing or yeah on my off days i'll be like i'll uh make sure to make myself available for like any type of walk-in or something like that. I'll put up on my Instagram and show that I'm available for, for walk-ins and I'll, I'll, I'll get maybe a couple. Um, and then in the meantime, I'll be drawing or working on some sort of art project, something, anything that can help boost my portfolio and show people that I'm constantly creating and working, mm-hmm. um, whether it's pre-drawn designs that I'm going to make available um, or something that's going to be that I'm using more as like a study in a way to like push myself. Um, I always make sure I'm finding something that can help uh, accelerate me forward. And do you feel like that set schedule you have helps you a lot? Yeah. Compared to like where you could come in whenever you want. I think having a set schedule, especially in the beginning helps um, with having like that, that regular work routine. And then also having the mindset that I helps keep that mindset of like, I need to be doing something every day. I need to be growing. I need to be continuing forward. Like, just because I don't have a client doesn't mean I can like sit and relax. Like there's always room to do, grow and develop somehow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I like, I have a question for you since, you know, I, I give a lot of advice here to some of the guys here cause I'm more of the veteran mm-hmm. here. Um, has Franco told you um, something that just remind, is there something that he's, some advice that he's told you that stuck to you that you can share with us? I'm curious. Yeah. One of the biggest tips I've ever gotten from him that really helped um, me with my lining uh, was matching my breath with my lines. So I'll take a, a breath in, and then as I come into my line and I, I come in at an angle, I'll slowly breathe out as I pull the line. 
and then I'll reset and take my next breath and pull my next line. And it helps a lot with steadiness um, and keeping like consistent depth. Lining was something that even though I practiced it on fake skin, it just didn't translate well as far as the knowledge that you got from it into like actually being applicable on yeah. real skin um, when you're pulling lines on curved surfaces and uh, the body as well. And, uh, Keeping that same consistency. That, that same consistency and the vibration and the amount of feedback you get feels different as well mm -hmm. versus like shading. Um, so I didn't really feel it. like I felt like while it did help with like steadiness, um, there are certain things that could only be learned actually on skin. Yeah. Um, and that tip right there helped me a lot. Anytime I have an area or piece where I'm lining and it's just like on a part of the part of the body to get to or the angle just feels a little bit more uncomfortable or I feel like I'm just having a little bit harder time like lining with the needle or their skin or whatever is going on I always fall back on that I'll stop slow down and take my breath pull my line as I exhale and I take my next breath and I continue that on throughout the lining nice that's cool man I'm gonna write that down one of the <laughs> things that I tell the guys here and I try to remind them all the time is like that you know we are a one a real low percentage. We have a highly a high skill that mm -hmm. we learned right mm -hmm. wherever, whatever stage we all started from, and I think we forget that sometimes because we're amongst you know everybody here that's an artist mm -hmm. and and does amazing roses and whatever, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, clients come in here and they can't draw worth a damn, you know. Right. And they know that, but I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves, like, hey. We we have a high skill, you know, and we can do this amazing work. Don't be so hard on yourself. The client still comes to get that rose from you because they cannot do it themselves, obviously. Right. I'm wondering, uh, that question was as far as like if Franco has given you any business tips or as far as an artist in general, has he mm. give you any tip that just stuck to your mind maybe? Or your dad, maybe your dad, maybe because he's been more on top of you yeah. as far as that. Um, as far as like the as far as just the, in general as a tattoo as artist, a tattoo right? artist you know because i tell the guys here like you know value yourself you guys have a skill that mm -hmm. not a lot of people have you know and so with that not only does uh, be proud of the the work that you mm -hmm. do here always achieve to be better and then just and overall just be a great person with the clients you know yeah that actually just reminded me i think the biggest phrase that he'd always um repeat to me again and again throughout my apprenticeship um was just to always go the distance the having the mentality of it doesn't matter you know how long it takes or how much time you need because you know apprenticing in a place where there's all these amazing and talented artists i would always see like the time frames and how quickly they're completing these pieces and things like that especially while you're learning um along with like your at least for me my first experience is like experiences ever charging a client it feels like it feels like a lot to like you almost want to like not take the money. not take yeah. the money yeah. you know you're like yeah. when you see that you've only completed whatever small amount and he's yeah. like it doesn't matter the work that you do on them and the total outcome for the piece is the most important part that work you're doing is going to be on their body for the rest of their lives i like that take your time slow down and always go the distance go as far as you can with it if you need to have them come back in for one two complimentary touch-up sessions because you really want it you this is just not healing quite right the way you need it to be mm -hmm. then do that always go as far as you can for your clients and then that was kind of like his vice for not only how I grow as an artist, but also how I build um, a connection and um, with my clients and the clientele as well. If you do good work for people and you take care of them, that ends up spreading. Over deliver. Mm -hmm. right? That's been a common thing that I ask other artists here. And I mean, it, it just comes down to that, dude. Mm -hmm. You know, if you over deliver, eventually their the clients are going to come back, you know, mm -hmm. because you gave them more than what they gave you, mm -hmm. in a sense. So. That's pretty cool. How do you feel like, since you're so young in the industry, we always ask this question to um, our clients or our, our guests that come in. I'm oh, sorry. Um, how do you how do you see the, the tattoo industry right now? Do you think it's at its peak? you think it's going to even blow up even more? I think it's What's just getting vision? started. Yeah. I think so. I think um, as time goes on, especially with fake skin and um, the way technology is allowing artists to practice more and more, I think what is going to become like the – bare minimum of like a skill set that mm -hmm. you'd expect an artist to have. I think that's going to elevate a lot. Um, yeah. And I also think that it's going to really start to change in a way where 
um, any form of replication is going to start to become more, uh, how do I put it? Having your own style, being able to create freehand, draw, those are going to become super important um, because as people's technical ability grows, as like the, the baseline of, you know, what tech, technique people have, yeah. it's going to, people are going to start to notice and um, our clientele are also going to start to notice what good work is and what good work isn't. So having like um, defining factors and your style and approach that uh, can differentiate you and separate you from the rest of uh, the industry as far as like having your own way of expressing your art is going to become key. Mm, I like that. That's so true. Yeah. Because you're, you're right. The baseline is getting higher. Mm -hmm. Now you just cannot just tattoo. Now you have to tattoo great just That's to even thing. get you know attention mm -hmm. especially now in an age where people want that instant gratification like mm -hmm. a lot of people are not going to go through what you did draw eight hours a time at a day you know five days a week yeah. um i feel like that's what you really need to start in the industry and stay in long you know mm -hmm. yeah um uh, as you're saying that you know i'm surprised nobody's came up with the newer style fake skin where the it emulates more of the skin you know what i'm saying i think um Pound of Flesh was working on newer stuff. You know, yeah. like something that's Pound a little bit more is, giving. Yeah, because you know? I think the one we used, it was a little bit rough. And then I just recently saw the ones you used, yeah. the little wooden ones thing. Yeah, those little wooden ones. Everything I actually worked on was all, I think, almost all Pound of Flesh. And they that actually the replicate a little bit better. Oh, yeah. 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 Something that beats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 it bleeds. <laughs> Imagine, Imagine if you gotta, you gotta let it heal. It, st it oh. starts shaking, you know, while you're tattooing. Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> random, huh? Damn. <laughs> hey, that might be true yeah. later. Huh? That would be, you know that'd be interesting. Getting yeah. like my first experiences too with having like someone like twitch or pull away just because like. Hey, people where are you think, going? People think, <laughs> people think that their arm is in the same place, therefore it's not moving. But they'll go to like grab a water bottle yeah, or whatever yeah. it is, and they or move the real quick. Like, or the oh, they're texting on their hand. Yeah, or it's they're like, just mm. chopping it up with you, and they start to move. Like, yeah. Those are the people that move a lot when they're yeah. talking and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that could be a TikTok right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Tats. you show the tags like a bunch of random lines. And shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where do you where do you see the the tattoo? industry in like 15 years after you've been tattooing for 15 20 years i think in 15 years it'll become um kind of the the general norm that tattooing is looked at as an art as like the rest of the fine arts are um a lot of times people maybe outside of the tattoo industry and such look at it as something that's like oh it's like you know you'll get the people that look at graffiti like it's just like vandalism like it's not an art form like a lot of these street arts don't get like the same credit that uh, fine arts do. And I think that over time it's going to become very quickly. I think people are going to see it as an art form, as the rest of the of other artists. Do. Yeah, the uh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know your thoughts on it because you do a lot of fine painting. What is it called? Fine art painting? Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe it is. I mean, I believe it's already going to that point because, like you said, people are looking at certain styles now. They're not just going to the random mm -hmm. shops to get a random tattoo. People have the accessibility to research the artist now. Right. So, um, like you said, if people have their own style, now you attract that certain people mm -hmm. towards you. Um, so I think it is going to start going more towards that fine art uh, way. Mm -hmm. But you're still going to have the other side where people just to get random tattoos, yeah. you know, or cyborgs are tattooing yeah. you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the that's scary thing. We think, uh, we think uh, on the podcast here, we have this thing where I think uh, in the next 10 years, someone's mm -hmm. going to invent an arm that can actually tattoo. I think, you know, not the crazy compositions, yeah, but a nice straight, you know. It's uh, going to be like the little waves I, of Pinterest. Line, I think it'll take over um, the little simplicity, flash. right? Yeah, yeah. There you go, like I that. think it'll take over Flash and pretty quickly. There goes hand poke artists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's coming, man. I mean, there's one going around on Instagram, you know, that the guy, really? the, yeah, the guy has it there and then the machine just comes and it did like a, Apes, right? The, mm -hmm. apes. the transition yeah. of apes. And all that. Not bad, bro. Really? Yeah, I mean, you could have put some, some tattoo artists out of the I game. Said, <laughs> Alan sent me that one. I was yeah. like, I wonder how it healed up. It just didn't <laughs> clean. The artist would clean it. Mm, uh, yeah, right. The, the death was good. You mean it wasn't the technician. Jack. 
<laughs> I feel like getting a machine to do like proper depth and not over like saturating or like not damaging skin certain things is going to take a while That'll but a while. Yeah. I definitely see it taking over that fresh. and understanding because each skin is different you have to treat each skin differently mm -hmm. you know you really do um, so I'm interested to see how that will be what about um, what about yourself like as far as um, you know your future have you thought about like man what do I want to do a lot of people always ask me like what do you want to do? You're going to be tattooing forever mm -hmm. or, or are you going to have your own shop? You know, that's yeah. always the number one thing they always tell me. So yeah. what about yourself as far as like so business think, moves, career wise? I mean, obviously tattooing, but what, what else do you see? So I think that's something that's uh, really important for all tattoo artists to consider, especially with how hard tattooing can be on the body as well. Um, just the, the positions we're in and the amount of hours that we put in as tattoo artists, um, it can really take a toll. So having some sort of like plan for other things you want to do um, that way that you're not having to be 70 and still like tattooing um, and doing long hour days is, is important. I think for myself, um, I definitely want to find a way to like always keep whatever I do involved with art, um, whether it be through um, I thought about like clothing and fashion, just any form of like any form of art that has to do with like self-expression is really interesting mm -hmm. to me. Um, and then it even be be fun to do things like open galleries or coffee shops that have art and like display other artists on like a weekly basis and things like that. Nice. Just any way to keep like whatever I do tied into the um, art community. Nice. Oh, yeah, that is dope. Yeah. That's cool. That is good. Dude. And do you ever get like a, is your, is your mentor text, I mean, business savvy? Does he put you on with things like that? Like if, or have you guys talked about that, discussed that, you know? So that's something that's kind of been new and we're like more so just trying to discuss is about like future stuff and things like that. Um, because you don't always have to have like different avenues, but learning how to have um, a more business approach, whether it's you take your, you know, your savings and invest in into real estate and things like that, mm -hmm. um, that could help you, um, you know, not have to always be on that grind day in and day out, trying yeah. to find other ways to take a, um, approach to having something you can fall back on, whether it's savings, retirement, things like that. You know, our bodies can only go on for so long. I feel like that's one thing that artists are realizing now. It's like mm -hmm. they have to have a second plan because mm -hmm. you can't tattoo till you're 70. I mean, you can, but not comfortably. You're not comfortably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Plus, the robots are coming. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to learn coding, dog. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, uh, I just, I'm barely starting to hear it as well. I mean, not everybody thinks about that part, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm 42 now, and uh, I told myself I don't want no tattoo past 45, you know? Right. I mean, not not on a daily basis. Daily basis. I just yeah. want a tattoo when I get, like, a bomb opportunity yeah. to do something that I like. I really enjoy. You know, like a three-day or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> like a unicorn that falls yeah. on my hands. Be like, do a whole back piece in three days? Yes, sir. <laughs> But obviously that doesn't come all the time, all right? The time. So you need a backup plan. And, mm -hmm. and and part of it is just, you know, starting from since you're 21, you guys are in your 20s still. Like, do it does come fast. I, when I was in my 20s, people would tell me, you need to put a little side for something bigger, mm -hmm. you know, or a, or a savings plan or, or an opportunity that will come, you know. Two years from now, there's going to be a lot of businesses going out under right now. And, and a lot of commercial places, maybe houses are going to drop. People need to be ready for that kind of, and, and they come in waves because I had an opportunity in 2010 to purchase a house because mm -hmm. that dropped. It dropped. And so as you guys, just some advice from an older cat, you know, they do come, it's cycles and it's, these cycles are built for youth as well too, so that you mm -hmm. guys get an opportunity, you know, so it's something to think about. Yeah. Right. Nice. That was a good podcast. <laughs> really good podcast. Are we done or? No, I'm just oh. saying, I'm just <laughs> saying like, this is a really good podcast. No, no, it's, it's, it's what we need to talk yeah, about, you know, because a lot of people are just thinking art, tattoo, art, yeah, tattoo, yeah. you know. But a, another simple thing is what we promote here is get your LLC done. Mm -hmm. Get your LLC because just having a, a business credit line mm -hmm. can save you so much on taxes, man. Yeah. You know? Because you're buying supplies, you're buying yourself. supplies. You're going to a museum to get mm -hmm. inspired. That's a write-off. Yeah, seminars. You know, you're buying, you buying clothes for yeah. a potential a podcast or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a write-off. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Everything is. Everything is, and people you get don't. tattooed. You get tattooed. You <laughs> yeah. can write that off. If you get seminar. tattooed, it's a write-off because you're getting like a little mini seminar. You know, yeah. I mean? yeah. Like as long as your tax person justifies it, and, yeah. And I mean, I just went to Yosemite and I traveled to San Francisco. 
I put that all on my business card because yeah. I, I wrote an email to my wife saying, hey, we need to go and get inspired somewhere, you know? Yeah. So that that helps, yeah. you know? So those all those little tricks that I think artists should also learn. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and now that with all the social media, like not only do you have to learn like the drawing part, which mm-hmm. you already did, you know, the tattooing part, mm-hmm. which you're in in it. Now you got to add the social media marketing and yeah. your business. So it's all one complex all thing. Of it. But that's the beauty of it, right? Mm-hmm. You're just in the beginnings and you want to. You want to grasp everything. You want to yeah. soak up everything, and you, there's not enough time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It always feels like there's never enough time. Do you feel I like know. that? I definitely feel like there's always so many things that I want to get started on and want to get going on, but then it's like at the end of the week, you're like, oh, yeah, where did like, the time the fly? Happened, yeah. Bro? Yeah. yeah. You don't even know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just know what. You I guys ever like it. schedule like in a month like little things? I think that that's a good tip that helped me. Mm-hmm. For what? I'll put in like for instance, like let's say you want to read a a business book or something right mm-hmm. so Dang. just you know schedule at least 10 pages for this week it can even be the minute things that you schedule yeah, yeah for me cool. it's like finish my podcast from these business guys that mm-hmm. i learned so i finish it and i'll write it on my notes finish yeah. it before then and then i'll drive here it's a 15 minute yeah. drive so five days a week that's that covers my yeah you know yeah. I didn't look at it that way. That's cool. Sometimes it's I things, just, yeah. when I started doing it, it's just before I go to bed. I used to be on my phone a lot. I'll just fucking grab a book now. Yeah. I just knock out. Do you read books right now or you just So them? I I uh I actually do a lot of audiobooks because then that uh, way um yeah. I just play them while I'm driving. Because I, I do about like a twenty minute drive to my shop and back to my house every day. So it's about forty minutes in the car total. I can mm. listen to a lot of a lot yeah. of uh books. It's what I've done. I I was doing that through um, the entire course of my apprenticeship as well. Hey, um, so have you had a job prior to tattooing? No, 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 Damn, I haven't. Bro, um, this is all yeah, in. It's all, all in. Because um, I was actually, during my senior year of high school, I was apprenticing part-time. I was doing like 15 hours a week. Um, and then after high school, it was straight to full-time. So it's been, it's been everything I've known. Have you ever wanted to experience like what a nine to five would be? is honestly after seeing all my friends throughout high school and, and afterwards the experiences that they go through so you've heard obviously of other apprenticeships going through right. right how do you feel that you went through this one how do you feel as mm. far as hearing other stories like do you look back and be like shit thanks dad <laughs> yeah no definitely extremely grateful um if only if anything only time um Progress is not the right word, but like when I've I've had times where I'm talking to older artists that have been in the industry for um, 30, 40 plus years and older cats and they're coming up to me asking like, you know, like, you know, they, they put you through the ringer and such yeah. and such. Um, where I, I don't know if I would say that I'd really want to go through like the amount of like type of like hazing and like the more negative experiences that older apprentices did have to go through. Um, but it would be nice to like, get like the same level of uh, respect from the older cats in the industry um, for a newer type of apprenticeship. Mm. Um, mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes I feel like hesitant to, um, you know, my apprenticeship was very difficult and a lot of hours that went into it. And I'm extremely grateful for the way it was structured. Um, but uh, to have like a, the same level of respect for the, these newer types of apprenticeships would be, something that i'd really like mm-hmm. well, i just think like the older older artists they they don't know like the new apprenticeships we have to adapt mm-hmm. with the new situations we're in right. like now we're tattooing way longer you know what i mean so yeah. our apprenticeships have to change compared because if you're gonna have your mentor right there next to you teaching you mm-hmm. you know it has to be after or before while or while they're tattooing for 10 hours at a time it's very trying to think about it like that yeah because before you'll just do flash flash things like that yeah. three Finish, four hours three, and then hour. i got time yeah mm-hmm. That's so i feel like the apprenticeships have to adapt to the new schedules or the new way that artists are working yeah yeah we're megan's our fourth apprenticeship yeah. apprentice so we've been learning on the way how to adjust it yeah and, and the first one that we got uh johnny he's still working here and we told him straight out like we don't know what other uh, shops are doing for apprentices, but we know what we want to see from mm-hmm. you, and this is this is what our apprentice is going to be. Yeah, we just had a, a full conviction of what we need to do 
to get this guy to tattoo yeah. and represent us. Yeah. And that's it. You know? And I think that's I what think, matters. I think that's the um, extremely important. I think that's like the way that um, at least I view that uh, apprenticeships should be leaning towards now is about like really helping to build and, and sculpt the person as an artist and as a yeah. tattoo artist um, rather than just putting them through hell to or make sure they earn their stripes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's no yeah. need for hazing. To yeah. Be honest, it's, so. uh, no. It's fun sometimes. But I'm speaking of... <laughs> 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 just kidding. Man. <laughs> Did you buy the chicken soup? By yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way, is it coming? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> speaking about hazing, have you had any uh, crazy apprenticeship stories where you're just like, oh, crap? Uh, not, not for myself. No. Everything was just always... Um, sticking to a strict routine and work um actually something that uh not not anything close to being hazing but something that was a, a really interesting part about my apprenticeship is uh my pops made it about like you know if you want to become a master you're going to live it like a master so like the first like year and a half i woke up when he did i ate when he did i went to the gym when he did in the morning i worked the, i worked his exact hours went home with him um he's like if you want to you know learn to work like this and be and you know this is what you want to become like you i'm going to show you damn goose bro, bro. That's, that's what i love about uh, this podcast because now we're hearing something like uh deep about you you know yeah. and had you not said that yeah. a lot of people could be like man this guy his dad just gave it to him yeah. you know his dad yeah. just did this but yeah. in reality they don't know they don't yeah. know exactly what you yeah. want to damn yeah. That's, that's dope. Respect, I mean, that's yeah. even, I feel like it's even more tougher than the little hazing <laughs> stuff, bro. That's, it is, yeah. yeah. I, I take the hazing eight day. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Does, does anything crazy happen at the, uh, at the Vatican or is just for the most part just chilling? For the most part, it's super chill. Um, everyone that comes in always has good energy and we really built like a family um, energy in our shop. And the clients that we do get are always, for the most part, super respectful. Um, oh, yeah. So it's it's been a great environment, and I I hear that lately a lot from clients. Like, is anything crazy happen at the shop? And I look back and I'm like, yeah, um, not that much, you know. Only a couple from you guys. But when I'm here, nothing really crazy happens. But yeah. But also, I think that comes from how what kind of culture you build at the shop. And I'm pretty sure yeah. Franco builds like a yeah. Like this is a serious place where elites come and get mm -hmm. tattooed i mean tattoo mm -hmm. and so therefore you're not gonna get those crazy moments you yeah. might have one or two funny things yeah you'll out, have you'll have your yeah but for the most part like if you build it right nothing really crazy happens because yeah. i was like damn what you know we haven't gotten any crazy stuff but i mean maybe you guys when i'm not here but yeah, sometimes <laughs> yeah just little stories you know yeah. nothing too crazy but um i'm i'm here for the random questions bro so if you were to use <laughs> A product non bishop. Did you get scolded? I've never tried anything. <laughs> would you wrap it? <laughs> I, I would. You wouldn't know. <laughs> but on that note, I've never tried anything that's not um, bishop or inkies. Oh, okay. that's, that's true because everything you use is there. Yeah, yeah everything, there. everything is there. Everything's all bishop and inkies. And I have tatsol. to represent. Yeah. You guys use tats on? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question, bro. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't want to like, you know, hey, put maybe. in a little bit of like a Nico or Taro or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe for like April Fools, bro. Maybe that, that way you could get away with it. Yeah, you don't get in trouble. I don't know. <laughs> You'll cool. be bad for life on the back. Why is it my key working? A non <laughs> Change the locks on me. <laughs> you got any advice for, obviously this has been about how you went through your apprenticeship with your yeah. dad, but you got any advice for these young people that, that are, starting the tattoo patience patience and humility um i think being able to understand and and uh obviously have the confidence to aim for wherever it is that you want to go but also of like being able to take that step back see where you are and just be willing to accept whatever knowledge you can possibly absorb um, from your peers or mentor is super important um there should never be a time when you have an opportunity to learn something and you don't take it always and even if you have a way to do something that works learn mm -hmm. uh, learn another way learn a new way learn whatever way is trying to be taught to you mm -hmm. um making yourself like a sponge is the most important thing and just accepting all of it that's a really like good that. tip yeah. all right big rome <laughs> you want to close this one out for us wait wait i got one more question oh okay <laughs> is, it, is it a tattoo machine or tattoo gun 
It's tattoo machine. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, okay. Funny story because I had one time in the beginning of my apprenticeship where I can remember being in like the older shops with my pops, but uh with in Franco and, and such, um, and people calling it like a tattoo gun like twenty years ago or so. Oh, right. right. I used to and I remember one that. one time I like slipped up and said tattoo gun in front of one of my uh uh my peers and they looked at me like what did you just say? <laughs> just the nastiest side eye. Like, the how dare you? <laughs> just everyone in the room looked at me and I was like, All machines stop. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good content to go around the convention and be yeah. like, Bro, what, what tattoo gun is that? Oh, <laughs> the <laughs> wildest thing ever. I don't know if Megan told you, like, every time she says tattoo gun, I'll be like, Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened during the podcast? or? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, um, it happened like five times during the podcast. But I've told her before the podcast, <laughs> like when she first started. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? Um, where can we find you? On uh, Instagram? Are you on TikTok? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram and um, TikTok as well. Uh, my Instagram handles my full name, Lajah Vaatate. And then my uh, TikTok is uh, Lavish Inc. Cool, cool. Nice. And, it, and your last name, how is it pronounced? Va'atete. Va'atete. Yeah. Va'atete? Cool. Uh-huh. We used to say Vatate. Huh? Yeah. 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 We were butchering it so yeah, bad. Yeah, but you're good. <laughs> Everyone nice. butchers it. It's always yeah. fun to but see how cool people try. But it's cool to learn it. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, and then any future, or what can we expect from you, you know, two years, five years? What, what are your plans? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, that's the exciting part. I just want to um, really try to put myself in as many situations to be in the position to have as many new experiences as possible, and then from there we'll see. Okay. Cool. Like today. Yeah. Like today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before before we let you go, favorite genre of music? Metal. Favorite tattoo artist. My pops. <laughs> good answer, good answer. You can tell us a real one. After that. <laughs> okay, and then uh, a, a side hobby that not a lot of people know about you, not even your clients. Mm, probably. Or injures. Um, probably mountain biking. Mountain biking? Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. We could wrap it up. Yeah. Or we got yeah. to yeah. wrap it up. Cool. This guy's got to go. Sounds good. So, thank you guys for having me here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. pleasure, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Super cool <Everybody>. podcast. <laughs> uh, leave a comment of what you guys thought about it and reach out to my boy right here. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah. Peace out. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Yeah.